I've never seen a yacht like this in my dreams Sailing the seas in boats so grand, it seems But we're just humble sailors Salt upon our cheeks Go classic every day of the week Hey everybody, welcome back to Boat Fool Sailing. Thanks for tuning in last week and thanks for watching this week. Big episode this week. We're going down to the great state of Maryland for our Boat Fool's Top 10 and two of my heroes, Herbie and Maddie from The Rigging Doctor have agreed to co-host today and I'm so excited to have them aboard. Welcome to the show, guys. Thanks for having us. We're very excited for this. Same. And um, I just want to say that we're, uh, we're hitting Maryland, we're hitting the top 10 coolest boats for sale for under 35000 and I have to say the decision making process was very difficult. How did you guys find it? Oh man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, there's so many gorgeous boats and the hardest part is not actually acting on it and going out and buying the boat. <laughs> Maryland is a huge hub for sailing. We have Annapolis, so there's always a ton of boats for sale and really good deals. So just sifting through and finding our favorites was actually a really difficult thing to do, but it was fun. We had a good time with it. Yeah, so for those of you at home, we're, we each picked three boats, two we're presenting, one is honorable mention, then we have one wild card for the 10th boat. And uh, yeah, I found the same problem, Maddie. Like there are so many sweet boats and uh, winnowing it down to those three was really quite difficult. And just quickly, you know, um, I did a deep dive on Ancestry.com and 23andMe and I found out we're actually related. And we're related because, <laughs> get this, we both own Morgans. You guys have the Morgan 45 and I have the Morgan 3823. <laughs> That's awesome. A fellow Morgan. Hey, they're good boats. Great boats, and, and uh, that's how I found you guys on YouTube, was uh, looking for other channels that had uh, boat owners that owned Morgans, and you guys were really only the ones that popped up, and, and then I fell over their show. It's been fantastic, so I'm thrilled to have you here. Welcome. Uh, thank you so thank much you. for watching. We're, we're really excited Oh my for this. God, my pleasure. Um, all right, so let's, uh, let's get right to it. So we're gonna start, I'll go first, and then we'll alternate down through the list, and we'll uh, vote up an eventual winner. Sounds good. All right, let's let's rock and roll. All right, so my first pick of the day is a 1987 Hallman uh, 27. It's called the Hallman Horizon. I've never seen one of these before, and I thought it was stinking cute. Its list price is fifteen thousand five hundred, located in Rock Hall, Maryland, um, and it's just this really sweet double ender. It's got uh, the frame for a bimini and it's got roller furling, it's a cutter rig, and it's like just an adorable pocket cruiser. Um, so going through the photos, it's got a transom hung rudder, but it is actually a wheel helm on this. And the hull looks to be in beautiful shape, the gel coat, uh, the bottom looks fine. And there are not many pictures, it's got a Volvo uh, diesel, I think it's a uh, 15 horsepower. And uh, down below, there are a couple pictures, but you can tell there's a table and a settee here, and then uh, the galley across the way right here. You got a little gimbaled stove, sink, ice chest, I presume, under there. And uh, here's the layout. So you've got a table that I bet collapses into a double. You've got a little head, V-berth, and a quarter berth, which uh, I think you can see tucked away in one of these pictures. But I just thought this thing was adorable. And uh, there's your quarter berth back in there somewhere. Um, and it looks to be in reasonably good shape and uh, it's been owned uh, for a while by uh, the same owners, I think since, um, uh, where did it say in here, 2013 or something like that. So they've owned it for quite a while. Uh, holds 30 gallons of diesel, which is a lot for a boat that size. And uh, I thought for uh, weekend sailing, um, you know, coastal cruising a little bit, uh, you could take this thing just about anywhere around the coast of Maryland. And it's got a shallow draft and it was built in 1987, so it should be easy to insure. Um, so looking at the sailboat data, you can see the color, cutter rig configuration on this nice big, uh, looks like nice deep combings in that cockpit so you can tuck yourself in there. And uh, you've got a length overall of 27 feet, a length on water of 23, a, bi a beam of nearly 10 at 9.6, fiberglass construction, I can find out about the decks. I suspect it's cored like most boats. Only 42 of these were built, so it's, it's pretty rare. Um, 
holds 30 gallons of water and uh, ballast displacement of 32, so uh, reasonably stiff boat, moderate displacement at 257. Comfort ratio is a little low at, at uh, 22, 21.89, because that's probably because of the short water line. And capsizing screening up to and uh, hull speed of 6.43. So, you know, you're not buying this for performance, you know, uh, but I think it'd be great on the Chesapeake and uh, the draft is only um, four feet. So pretty sweet for um, the waters down your way. So that's, that's my first pick of the day. Yeah. Wow, but, you have a lot of details <laughs> that you have included in your picks. <laughs> well, okay, so a couple of things. There was another little tidbit about that. Most of those, the, the 40 that were made, were sloop configuration. They only made a couple that were cutters. Like, this is the rare few. And then the bow sprit. The bow sprit. At Herbie is a sucker a for a bow sprit. Yeah. <laughs> that right there, when I was scrolling, uh, scrolling through, I saw the bass for I was like, that one. Yay. That one is gorgeous. So I, I felt the same but. way, and the transom's just so pretty on her, too. I just, it's, yeah. you know. Yeah. Here comes the butt. Well, okay, so the capsize screening, uh, being over two, that's, yeah. that's not good. And I forget which, there's some race that if the boat has a capsize screening over two, you can't even enter because you're deemed unsafe. So... It's good for coastal, I like absolutely. You got tons of room, tons of space, but it's not. Looks like it's got a really nice beam, so yeah. it's a comfortable boat for like calm water. As yeah. long as the water's calm, I get seasick. So I'm looking at that thing and I'm like, I would die. But... <laughs> the ratio is pretty low on this. Yeah, so you you bring up a good point that capsize is green. It was developed after the fast net race. Um, when all those uh, deaths occurred in that 19, I think it was 78 or 79 fast nut. And I think you're right, I think you can't even do the Newport Bermuda race unless your capsizing screening is under two, which is the benchmark. Um, and it's all about writing moment. Um, but yeah, you're right, it, great for coastal cruising. Um, I just thought it was adorable, I'd never seen one before. Yeah, it, it's, it's really cute. It's a cute boat. And then the other thing, it's they're asking 15. You can get them down from there. Right. If you, you could get this for 10 or 12 and you'd have yourself a sweet little pocket cruiser, in my opinion. Or even a liveaboard. <laughs> like, there's so much room in that boat. Yeah. yeah. Right. No, it looks it. It looks it. Um, all right. So, uh, should, we, uh, should we score it up? Let's score it up. All right. Let's go to the scorecards. All right. All right, Maddie. Uh, you're up. What do you got here? I'm up. Okay. My first pick was the 1977 37 Cree Lock. Uh, it's a blue water cruiser. That right there is the number one reason that I chose it. You can see it's a gorgeous boat. It has external chain plates, which I really like, and which we're about to do to our boat. Um, it's got a full keel, which is very important if you're gonna be going ocean cruising. And it is a sloop but um, we can get over that part. <laughs> it's got a really roomy cockpit, uh, which I like. The interior, it's, it's a smaller boat, but I think it's very livable. So I look at these boats from the perspective of a liveaboard, and I just think that it's got a really nice layout inside. It looks like it could do with a little bit of maintenance, but the cost for this boat is really reasonable. I mean, the outside looks like it's in really good condition. It looks like it had a recent paint job. And I just, I think this boat is gorgeous. And for ocean cruising, it looks comfortable, safe, heavy displacement, all of these things that I value in a boat. It's a pretty boat, Manny. Jeez. And the list price is 12500 uh, located in Easton, Maryland. Uh, is that Eastern Shore? Is that out on the shore? Yeah. Yeah. Easton is a gorgeous spot. I mean, if you're not even going there to look at this boat, it, you should visit Easton. It's now, so cool. Another thing, when you're shopping for boats in the Chesapeake, they're cheaper on the Eastern Shore because no one wants to drive across the bridge to go see it. So they <laughs> sit longer and the price drops. That's, yeah. See, that's some great that's local intel right there. Um, <laughs> yeah, this was listed just a month ago. So um, the Yanmar diesel is a 2014 with only 1,100 hours on the sail drive on that. I mean, that's pretty sweet. Um, I see what you're saying, the down below could use a little scrub, the sole floor could be redone, but whoop-de-doo, I mean, that's not a big deal. Um, 
It's got six sails, solar panels, wind generator, monitor, wind vane. Oh, oh, the other big thing about it was the monitor wind vane. Sorry to pick to cut you off. You just reminded me. This thing comes with a monitor wind vane. That alone is worth six grand. So, I mean, and the monitor wind vane is amazing. It also has a wind generator and solar panels. So yes. you're getting an amazing deal on this boat. Yeah, you're getting a cruising ready boat yeah. for 12 grand. Yeah. And it also has a single sideband radio for your offshore cruising, right? Because that's what you want to have on board for backup. Uh, lazy jacks. Um, it's got everything. And then uh, I just wanted to see. Oh, yeah. This was um, part of the Pacific Seacraft family. And um, it says here that the interior needs some upgrading. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but, you can do that work yourself. And if you don't feel comfortable doing that, it's not a huge boat. So it's not going to be a big deal. Oh, the other thing. Uh, so when I bought our boat, the there was a ton of stuff I needed to do to the interior to make it livable because the varnish was peeling. Oh, no. And the <laughs> surveyor, he, he told me, hey, live with it for a month. See if it still bothers you. It was about 10 years later that I actually fixed it. Like at that point, the birds like kind of picked at it. It's like, okay, now I need to fix it. Well, the benefit is if you wait that long, there's less picking you have to do. It's mostly done by itself, right? Like it'll be easier to sand at that point. Um, well, let's look at the sailboat data on this. So um, super pretty boat. Um, this one is a uh, Marconi rig, not a catch, right? Yeah, yeah, it's the Marconi Bermuda rig on the subject, but it is cutter. Um, and oh, length, I, I, well, at least in the picture it is on sailboat data, it looks like it might be a well, cutter. What it is is that you can run a, uh, a storm jib. Ah, gotcha. Okay, perfect. Uh, and it's got a nice protected prop, which is fantastic, at least up in the main waters. You're not picking up pot buoys. Uh, length or overall of 37, length on the water of uh, nearly 28, 27 and three quarters, uh, beam of 11 feet, and uh, fiberglass construction max draft of 5.33. Holds 40 gallons of diesel. That's also awesome for offshore uh, cruising. You've got a good uh, supply of diesel. 95 gallons of water, which is fantastic. Uh, sail area displacement of 14 and a half. Not the fastest in light air, but she'll go when the wind blows. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. A lot of light air down on the Chesapeake. Um, balance displacement of 37 and a half, so a reasonably stiff boat. Heavy displacement at 334. Comfort ratio of nearly 34. That's going to be a comfortable boat. Uh, that capsize and screening is well under two at 1.72, so great for offshore, and an S factor of 1.42. So moderate performance, but you're not buying it for that. You're buying it to go explore the world. So, um, exactly. Maddie, that is a solid first pick. I uh, thank you, thank you. I would buy it tomorrow. Just saying. Until <laughs> five, too, right? That yeah. yeah, you can get that for less money than the uh, the little cute guy with the bow spring. Yeah, the little Holman. I know it. Uh, and have almost three times as much boat, um, or twice as much boat anyway. Uh, all right, well, let's go to the scorecard and score this one up. All right, Herbie, you ready for your first pick of the day? Yeah, so this is a sea sprite. It's a 34 foot. Now, it is on the higher end of the price, especially after her $12,000 find. So <laughs> it's kind of a mute point. But mute, <laughs> mute, moot. Moot point. <laughs> 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 so the, the it's also smaller too man you beat us on everything jeez all right so all right this boat's just it's immaculate it's in tracy's landing that's a little south of where we are it's it's on the western side so it's you pay more versus your eastern shore find okay but this boat is just it's immaculate it's gorgeous it's a fractional rig so for upwind sailing it's just a beast and then it's a full keel so if you bump into the bottom you just get off the bottom either by a toe or the tide or something but like no big deal like it's just everything about it it's just, it's so pretty it is gorgeous and, and it also has the um the nice stern overhang the stern overhang oh, yeah. which we love yeah and it also ha it looks like it has a gory prop so like you're getting a feathering prop on this boat and those suckers are a couple grand so oh yeah you're right look at that yeah I saw that, I was like, whoo, cause I looked at getting one of those for a Morgan and it was like $4,000. Yeah, pass. So we didn't, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a really pretty boat. Um, these uh, were uh, made in Rhode Island and by a CE rider. And uh, so 
Uh, you mentioned the price, Herbie. It's $39,850. So we did say today it was under $35, but no one's paying $39,850 for this boat. Yeah, you, you bring them down. There's negotiations that happen. You have the survey come out, the surveyor is going to say all these things are horribly wrong, walk away from the boat, and then you look at the owner and you're like, oh, do you want to unload it? Because it's a horrible mess here. And he's like, oh, crap. And then brings down the price. And then you have a beautiful boat. <laughs> yeah, and you've got, a, you've got a windlass on this thing. Yeah. I know. It's got like all these creature comforts. It's, it's really nice. Looks like it's got a wind vane. Or uh, wind yeah, generator. Wind, wind generator. Wind yeah. Generator. yeah. Oh, look at it down below. I mean, this is... Oh, uh, man, uh, yeah. that's so, gorgeous. The boat's immaculate. Like, you're paying 40 You got a well, gimbaled stove. You've yeah. got the... Oh, man. Yeah. It's like this boat is turnkey. Like, everything is just gorgeous in it. So you, you pay a little more, but then you don't have to put in all the legwork to bring it up to Bristol fashion. Like, it's done. Whoa. Yeah. Um, that's freaking out on me there. Uh, so, um... They have a lot of pictures posted, and that's a good sign when you're looking at boats. If there's like two or three pictures, and someone in there has got like a suit jacket with massive lapel pins from the 70s, you know that it's a really old picture, and the boat <laughs> does not look like that now. So like, tons of pictures is a really good thing, because the boats, like, you can guess that that's current, what the boat looks like now, and that it looks good enough that they're willing to put pictures of it. That's an excellent point. And they take close up of, of things too. This boat has sailed from Maine to Florida and the Bahamas. So she's well traveled. Uh, you got a stack pack. Uh, you do have a Cape Horn wind vane on there. Um, you've got a lot of things that you guys can all look through at your own time. Uh, the audience I'm talking about, but that's a really pretty boat. My one, my one beef with this boat and I, and I, and I've looked at it closely and I'll show you, uh, is this right here between your helm traveler and your bridge deck looks like you're going to break your ankle in there one of these days yeah. if, you're, if not careful. I, I know what you mean. I'm not a fan of the traveler just behind the companionway because someone, someone's going to be in the cockpit not paying attention because I'm out of the way. I don't need to worry. And then you tack and they get hit. Yep. Or you take a funny step and fall and your leg is is leveraged in there and that could be a bummer but uh you just got to be careful and be aware of it but that's a really pretty boat full keel let's look at the sailboat data on that real quick uh there's your fractional sloop that you mentioned uh nice protected prop uh like you said you can bump along the bottom on this and not do any damage to it as long as it's sandy um only 45 of these were built looters designed um uh, length overall of 33.84, length on water of 24, beam of 10 and a quarter, uh, max draft of five feet, so pretty great for down in the Chesapeake area. And um, let's see, holds uh, 18 gallons of diesel, and her sail area displacement is nearly 16 at 15.52. Uh, uh, nice stiff boat at 39.06 with your ballast displacement, and uh, she's a heavy displacement at 413. Comfort ratio, again, over 30 at 33. That's gonna be smoke and comfortable boat uh, for you, Maddie, anyway. And yep. uh, capsizing screen of 1.76 and an S factor of 99. So again, not the fastest boat in light air, but when she blows, this boat will go and point because of that fractional rig. Now, another thing, you can tell that a boat is designed to sail versus motor when they don't carry much diesel, but carry a lot of water. Because that means that you're going to go for a long time and they know that you're not going to need the motor. So that the fact that it's like a couple gallons of diesel and then 50 gallons of water, that's a really good sign. You'll see some boats that it's like 90 gallons of diesel and 30 of water. It's like, yeah, you're motoring everywhere. <laughs> Interesting point. I'd never, ever heard of that. But I love these uh, sea sprites. They're really, really gorgeous boats. And, and built in Rhode Island, looters design, these things are solid and built to last. So that's a solid pick. Um, you guys want to score it up? Yeah, let's go. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, nice pick, Ernie. All right, so my second pick of the day, which I'm now nervous to present based on the information you just gave us about a lot of photos per boat. Uh, there are not many for this boat, but she's a Morgan, right? And we love Morgan. She's a Morgan 35 centerboard, $15,000, listed two weeks ago in Chestertown, Maryland. And she's a 1971, and it's been repowered with a Yanmar with only 400 hours on it, new Edson steering, pedestal, and many upgrades, according to the short description, which is now making me very nervous. But it's a really pretty boat. The lines on her are spectacular, and it is a centerboard, which 
presents its own uh, pluses and minuses, but um, it is what it is. So the down below is pretty straightforward and simple. Everything looks neat and clean. Uh, the toilet looks like it's been updated. Here's your, it looks like a black water holding tank behind the head there. Um, a little galley, and there's your V-berth and another quarter berth and the floor looks like it's just fiberglass so easy to maintain low maintenance um, and it looks like this table drops to fold into a double berth there and it looks like the down below will be low maintenance the hull looks like it's been painted or at least really well maintained uh, but it really looks like a pretty example of the morgan 3.5 and i'm just such a fan of uh you know, Charlie Morgan and Ted Brewer. I don't know if Ted Brewer designed this. We'll find out in a second, but uh, just a lovely boat in my opinion. Uh, well, I, I, I have an issue with swing keels. Uh, the, they're excellent because when you're sailing, you can actually trim not only your sails, but also you trim your center of lateral resistance. So you can like perfectly balance the sail plan. But that pin, it's hard to inspect. And if the pin goes, your keel falls off. <laughs> So, like, everyone's worried about keel bolts. It's like, imagine a keel pin, and it's one. So, I, like, for that reason, I'm not a huge fan of uh, centerboards and uh, swing keel boats. And then the other issue is uh, if the line that, you know, pulls it up, chafes, breaks, any issue like that, your keel's now down all the way. So, like, your nice four-foot draft is now a ten-foot draft, and then you can't even get back to your slip. Right, that's an excellent point. But uh, just quickly, since we're down in Maryland, do we really need that centerboard if we're just going to be doing some coastal cruising and that sort of thing? I mean, the water's pretty shallow down there. Uh, they're so you point so well with the board down. It's <laughs> it's night and day. Uh, like if you have a centerboard, you're you're like it's like running around with your pants down <laughs> with the board up. <laughs> It's like you, you can't, your legs don't go anywhere. <laughs> All right, that's an excellent analogy. All right, let's look at sailboat data and see what we can learn about this boat. Yeah, I, I will say I just, I do love the classic lines and the really um, sweet sheer on this boat. I think uh, there's a lot to like about her. It's a gorgeous boat. It's got that stern overhang that we love about Morgans. Yeah, above the water line, it's gorgeous. <laughs> All right, here we go. The sailboat data, Morgan 35. I love the profile on this boat. I love the nice sheer on her, nice lines. All right, length overall, 35 feet. Length along the water of 27.58. You got a beam of 10.75, so nearly 11 feet. Max draft of six and three quarter feet. And with your board up and your pants down, uh, you've got a minimum draft of four and a quarter. That's pretty sweet. 140 of these were made. It is a Charlie Morgan design, not Ted Brewer. Uh, really uh, kind of cool. This says it's a universal atomic for the uh, subject boat as a Yanmar, thank goodness. Uh, holds 40 gallons of water, 26 gallons of diesel. Sail area displacement's not bad at uh, 16.85. Nice stiff boat at 42. Uh, moderate displacement of 253 and a comfort ratio of under 30 at 26.09. So not too bad. Capsizing screening of under two, that magic number, and an S factor of 2.13. So not bad. Nice numbers. Uh, that's my second. The, that's my second pick of the day. You want to uh, want to vote it up? Yeah, it, it's a good boat. That's for sure. Yeah, you know, a nice solid boat and she's pretty as well. So yeah, that's my uh, that's my second pick of the day. What do you think? Should we uh, score her up? Let's score Let's it. Score it. Let's see what she gets. All right, Maddie, you ready for your second pick? I'm ready for my second pick, but I have to preface it. <laughs> first, first of all, I thought that our budget was forty thousand. <laughs> So um, it's a little on the high side, but like we said before, um, we can, I mean, generally you don't pay the asking price, right? So you'd be able to get this down pretty significantly from 40000 So let's just pretend that we're still in budget. And uh, the other thing I cheated on, which I just realized um, today, right before recording this, is that this is actually in Delaware. <laughs> so... Um, I've cheated on two accounts, and I apologize. <laughs> for shame, Maddie, for shame. But look. <laughs> I know. I never was good at following directions. <laughs> it, this is not a hard and fast rule. Like you said, uh, you're not going to pay 40 for this. You will get it for under 35 for sure. And Delaware is not that far from Maryland, and they border each other. So, uh, yeah. Right. I mean, it came up on my Facebook marketplace. So, like. <laughs> and you don't even need to go in the ocean, like. 
Yeah, yeah. Right, you can sail yeah. it down in Maryland. All right, well, tell us a little <laughs> yeah. bit about this boat. What is she? Okay. Well, I'm still happy with my choice because I'm coming at this from the perspective of a liveaboard. And so to me, this is a super liveaboardable, which is a word I've just made up, boat. Just point it. I like it. <laughs> um, it's a 1985 Ericsson 35. Uh, 35 is a great manageable length. Um, if we flip through the pictures, we can see the cockpit is really nice and roomy. Um, the boat has really nice lines. It's well taken care of. But what I really loved about this boat was the interior pictures. Um, it is beautifully maintained. It has a teak interior and it, it just looks very roomy and livable. What I love about this boat is that it has a keel step mast, uh, which is really important for big time cruising. And even though it has a fin keel, we can get over that. Um, and, <laughs> and note that that makes it a uh, faster boat and more maneuverable and everything you get from a fin keel. Um, so I just think this is a gorgeous, well-maintained boat and you would, you, you would have a really, really good time in this boat, I think, especially around the Chesapeake, especially around the Delmarva. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I, you know, I, this is a really cool boat and it's got one thing of note I just was reading. Um, not only does it hold 85 gallons of water, it holds 40 gallons of diesel and it was repowered recently uh, with only 170 hours on it. I don't recognize this brand. You guys might. But uh, these Ericsson's, it's a Bruce King design. These are pretty boats and they're fast. And one of the neat things about these and, and you guys can appreciate this, this headliner down here is all zipped. Right, it's got zippers. So to access uh, some through bolts to like winches and whatnot on a traveler, you can just unzip and access it without ripping everything apart. It's really handy, but it looks really clean. And my buddy had an Ericsson 35. And it's got top loading fridges, which I also really like um, as a liveaboard because that really increases your counter space. Um, and you can see that notch there. So you can tell that it's the interior is really built with cruising in mind. Um, no sharp edges, really nice rounded corners there. So you can kind of chalk yourself in when you're underway and you're inevitably uh, healing over. Also, it's got really nice fiddle walks all the way around. Mm -hmm. So if you put something Things on the sliding. counter, it's not going to fall off. Yeah, they yeah. won't slide off. So and like then, when I was really, I was really concentrating on the interior of this boat just because it was clearly built with cruising, like ocean cruising or big cruising in mind, um, which is so important. Or there are two in your head, which is yeah. nice. Um, Another thing I really like, all the wood is inside. Mm -hmm. The outside is just glass. So Absolutely. maintenance Excellent. is so much easier. Yeah, sorry, that's an excellent point, Herbie. And you have a Bimini and Dodger, Lazy Jacks. Uh, it's it's really uh, set to go, and a nice ladder off your transom for uh, ingress and egress. Um, yeah. Maddie, that's a nice boat. Um, and uh, my friend has had an Ericsson 35, and he had to get rid of it, and he just bought an Ericsson 32 too. And he swears by these boats, and he takes them everywhere. Um, that That's a nice pick. Let's... Um, Let's look at the sailboat data on this. Uh, like you said, she's 1985, so it's going to be easy to insure because it's it's less than 40 years old. So 35.3, um, and there's your uh, fin keel you were mentioning that we have to get over, I guess. But I don't mind a fin keel. We have a lot of those, a lot of boats up here are all fin keel in Maine. So 35 and a half feet overall, length on water of 28.87, uh, beam of over 11 feet, 11.33. That's nice. Max draft of uh, just over six feet. So a little bit deeper for the Chesapeake, but you'll be okay. And Bruce King design, as we said, 40 gallons of diesel, um, 50 gallons. This one holds 85 gallons of water, the subject boat. Uh, sail area yeah. displacement, at, yeah, that's a lot of water. Um, sail area displacement at 17.34, so she's a fast boat. She's a good racer, cruiser, nice stiff boat at 40. Um, moderate displacement at 241, and a comfort ratio of nearly 26, so more of a racer, cruiser, comfort ratio. But you could take this across the oceans, Herbie, 1.93 and an S factor 2.29. So fast boat, good numbers. That's a nice pick. It's hard to have negative things to say about a good Ericsson uh, that's in good condition. And this one looks to be in really nice condition, Maddie. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. 
Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Herbie and I would have found it too if we were looking in Delaware, but we weren't, so. <laughs> <laughs> now, now. <laughs> All right, well, let's uh, let's score it up. Nice pick. Let's score yeah. it. <laughs> All right, Herbie, your second pick of the day. What do you got here? Okay, so this is a Baba 30. They are a famous blue water cruiser. I, I mean, they're gorgeous. They got a bowsprit. It's got bulwarks, full keel. It, it's a gorgeous boat, and it's only 20 grand. So that made it really hard to not go out and buy it <laughs> and just add to the fleet. Because, you know, what, what's better than two boats? Three. <laughs> oh, look at that gorgeous helm. I know. And, a, yeah, butterfly hatches. It, it's, it, the woodwork in this is just so pretty. Oh, yeah. So the, it's a gorgeous boat. That's it's a gorgeous it. boat. That's and uh, where's Rock Hall, Maryland? Is that near you guys? or is that Eastern Shore. It, honestly, if you're sailing from Baltimore to Annapolis, it's your first tack. You sail to Rock Hall, you tack, yeah, then you head further down. down. Nice yeah. bronze ports. Yeah, now, all right, the reason this wasn't my first pick, being how, you know, it's a cutter rig, full keel, like, it's all the things I love, it's main detracting points. It has an iron ballast instead of lead, so that's not as dense, and also, if it starts to rust, you have a big problem. Uh, second issue is the, the butterfly hatches, while they are gorgeous and let in great wind from when it's blowing from the side, they leak. They leak so badly. Uh, waves hit, it comes in through the hinges, like, so that's that's the main detractor for it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Two minor points. Smoking cool boat. Um, she's 1980, so she's a little bit older in terms, for insurance purposes, but you can find insurance. Uh, we profiled one of these up in the Pacific Northwest, and it is not quite as beautiful as this one. And this, this is really beautiful. And I was just noting that uh, it's got reverse cycle AC, uh, a Yanmar uh, diesel, I don't think it says the hours, but uh, it's got 12 volt refrigeration um, and you got a chart plotter and, whoops, sorry about that. Um, it just says the uh, Teak and Holly sole needs a little bit of work, who cares, uh, that's easy. Um, let's see if there are any other details on this. Now, uh, one thing, a trick to the butterfly hatch is you get some umbrella canvas that just goes over it. So you're going out to sea, you cover it up. It doesn't leak. So it's like, it's not the end of the world and it's gorgeous. Yeah, I can get past a little leak uh, to have those butterfly hatches. Uh, holds 80 gallons of water and 35 gallons of diesel and it's a 15 gallon holding tank. So it's got everything you need to go go offshore and, and have a ball. That's a really pretty boat. Um, I'm sorry I didn't see that before you. That's a cool boat. I'm trying to find a nice picture of it, but um, there she is. Let's look at the, uh, I'm sorry, Maddie, I'm talking over you. No, no, you're fine. I was just remarking about its shippiness. It's very shippy, and I love that. It's got the, um, uh... Bulwarks. Bulwarks, yeah, yeah. which we absolutely love. Yeah. Now, that and is a lot of maintenance, work. though. Yeah, but the scroll work as well. Oh, it's so pretty. And a bowsprit. <laughs> it's worth the price of admission right there. Um, all right, let's look at the, uh, and she is fiberglass. It's just that's uh, embedded in the fiberglass to make it look like wood. Yeah. So no one panic. Um, Lots of aesthetic choices. Right, right. So here's the, it's a cutter rig, full keel protected prop. That's awesome. Length overall of nearly 30 feet at 29.75. Length on the water of 24 and a half. Beam of 10 and a quarter. Max draft of only four and three quarters feet. That's amazing. Um, 170, 170 of these were built, built in Taiwan. Bob Perry design, uh, Volvo diesel. This one has a Yanmar, the subject does. Um, and let's see, sailor displacement of just over 15. Nice stiff boat at 40. Ultra heavy displacement at 379. Comfort ratio, all of your guys' boats have been really comfortable. 33.38 <laughs> and sea, yeah, seasickness in mind, always. Um, capsizing screening under two at 1.77 and S factor of 1.12. So slow and light air, she'll go in a breeze. That's that's a really, really nice boat. I love these babas. Yeah. Now you've said things about Taiwanese boat okay. boats. Okay, all right. So now here's my issue with Taiwanese boat boats is I was reading in one of the party books, there was a whole bunch of cruisers were anchored in Cabo and there was a hurricane coming through and the hurricane was supposed to blow from one way and then it went its own way because it doesn't know the forecast. So it blew from a different way and all the boats went up on the beach. All the boats that were European and American built went up on the beach. The couple boats, one was a Vegabond, uh, the, the gorgeous catch, uh, 
went up on the beach and when the boat hit the beach, the cruisers jumped out and ran into the trees and hid. After the hurricane passed, they couldn't even find a single piece of their boat. Like it just disintegrated. So the there's a, a ratio where it's like, all right, how much does the boat does the boat weigh and how much does it cost? And if the if you're getting a really cheap boat, like you're getting a lot of boat for cheap, it's because it's not as well built. And then you have a horrible situation like that and the boat will disintegrate. So this was also, it's a book from the 80s, but it's always stuck in my mind. It's like the Taiwanese boats, they're gorgeous and they're also very affordable. And, and this was built in 1980. Yes, right. <laughs> it fits everything, but, but it's a gorgeous boat. So it's like, don't be in a hurricane and hit a beach. But, but just a thing to consider. A good cautionary tale. A good cautionary tale. All right, fair enough. Like, just saying, yeah, just saying. Like, we went up on a beach. It was not nice. It was not calm either. And we were fine. Like, we just got hauled off the beach and we were good. Uh, so it's like, oof. So that, that's why this wasn't my first pick. What you're saying is buy a Morgan. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> All right, uh, let's score this one up. Okay. All right, so now we're going to go through our honorable mentions. We're not going to do the sailboat data. We're just going to blaze through and mention uh, each of us had one honorable mention today. So mine was a 1977 Endeavor 32 foot sloop, 19,900, located in Pasadena, Maryland. And um, it only has 1,834 engine hours. And I just thought for someone looking to upgrade or do some cruising around the Chesapeake or downgrade to a smaller boat, upgrade to a bigger boat, this would be a good one. You've got a Bimini, you had a Dodger frame, apparently it needs a new Dodger. And um, really simple, easy boats to sail. They're comfortable, the pictures are a little blurry, sorry. She is a centerboard, so uh, Herbie's not gonna like it, but the bright work looked nice and uh, it looked, uh, it's got a windlass, it's got a roll of furling jib, and I'm trying to get down below real quick. You got a gas locker that looks ABYC compliant. Nice high uh, bolt, uh, combings in the cockpit. And the down below looks simple and easy. It looks like they have some rug down over the sole floor. So I don't know if they're hiding something or if it's just fiberglass and they put it down so they don't slip. But uh, it comes with a TV uh, and you've got a you know a nice easy companionway gas stove. But a really simple boat, easy to sail, comfortable. And I thought it was worthy enough to make the honorable mention list. And the engine only had uh, less than 2000 hours on it. So, uh, and a composting head. Whoops. Nice. Yeah. So uh, that was my honorable mention. And um, Maddie, you had a nice one. What do you got here? I agree. Um, my, my honorable mention is a Bristol 30. Uh, this one's at 14 thousand five hundred dollars so it's pretty affordable what i loved most about this boat was that the pictures show it at, like at sea it is sailing it is beautiful it has pretty lines there's a guy on it so he looks pretty big next to the boat which it's a it's a smaller boat um but it's it's priced accordingly so i just think that it has nice lines the interior looks wow. gorgeous um, the interior is, I mean, it's hard to come up with anything not to like about it. Uh, and as you can see, it seats four comfortably in the cockpit. So I just thought this was a really nice, really nice deal. Really good boat. Also the helm, well, the helm being that far forward in the cockpit, you can single hand it. You can reach all your winches and the wheel. That, that is a really, really nice setup. It looks like you got auto helm on there, obviously, and you've got some solar, nice little hard, rigid bimini. It looks like it's decked out for cruising too. Uh, the notes does say that it needs a good scrub, uh, and he's aware of that. But um, that's that's a nice looking boat, and I love Bristol's. But I am just going to throw a flag on this, Maddie. I mean, it's in Washington D.C. I mean, maybe do you guys consider that Maryland down there? I mean, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> that, that's a little square cut off of Maryland. It's it's. <laughs> Basically Maryland. I yeah. mean, come on. <laughs> they're not even a state. They don't exist. <laughs> and Virginia doesn't want them, so they're Maryland. Uh, yeah, pretty boat. And it's a Harishoff design, and it's been extensively refitted and modified for blue water single-handed cruising, which uh, clearly uh, that gentleman right here was doing. I mean, he's he's intense. You can tell. He, he's he got it going on. He knows what he's doing. <laughs> yeah. 
that's that's a cool boat and for that price of 14.5 you get that for 10 or less or maybe 12 even i mean that's you're not going to get hurt and bristles are just beautiful beautiful boats um nice pick yeah. all right so uh herbie you had uh this as your honorable mention what is it it's a freedom 28 and the the best part about it is there is no rigging to worry about it has a self-standing mast uh so it's it's keel steps and just the mast step and the deck partner is all it needs so you never have to worry about a shroud failure and your mast falling over so just that peace of mind is really nice as a really shallow draft uh the reason it's third in line is it's 28 feet and 20 grand so it's a lot of money for not much boat and uh, freedom rigs they're they're top heavy they're, it's a very heavy mast because you don't have the rig supporting it so then the spar itself is really heavy so they tend to heal more there's a reason rigging is on every other boat but but it's a really cool boat so you'd have a boat like when you pull into an anchorage everyone's gonna look and you'll be like i've never seen that boat before it's like yeah it's a freedom boat free of rigging <laughs> free of rigging i i like it and at 19.5 again uh, maybe a, a little more expensive than some of the boats but it's newer it's 1988 so you're gonna be easily ensuring that it's got the stack pack bimini a self-tacking jib that's I mean, those are all, that's all sweet. Um, I'm sorry that's so blurry, but no, that's a nice boat. Uh, friends of mine bought a, a used Freedom 35 and they love it. Um, and this looks like it's ready to rock and roll. The uh, cushion fabric looks nice and all that. So that's nice. Nice pick for an honorable mention. Um, all right. So let's, uh, we have a wild card and Herbie's also going to tell us a little bit about this boat too. And that is this. <laughs> bear with me you want to go sailing it's a thousand bucks and these boats are fast uh they i've come across a couple people on them and they love them i've met people on the bigger versions of them but uh and i've i'm not good at pronouncing the name of the boat but it's like seidelman and okay they're just such good racing boats so you want to go knock around have fun on like a wednesday night race or you know, just sail around the buoys or something, it's the boat for it. You want to sail somewhere further, you can make it. And you'll get there really quickly. So it's it's really cool for just like short little hops and stuff like that, a little weekend out. And it's a thousand bucks. So if you want to go sailing, this is the boat that can get you on the water to then decide if you want to get a bigger boat or if this is good enough. It's so cute. And it has, it, it looks like it's in really good condition too. Yeah, and there's, there's not much to go wrong. It's an no. outboard. So, like, motor issue, you unbolt it, bolt on a new one for a couple hundred bucks, you're off. It's, yeah, I like it. Look, I mean, for 1100 bucks, uh, to get, to dip your toe into sailing, this would be a really cool boat to do it. Um, the Sutherlands are, are neat, fast boats. Uh, 1100 bucks is a deal, and it's located in Deal, Maryland. How about that? Hey. Uh, <laughs> um, but it's got a uh, long shaft outboard that runs great and uh, says make an offer. I mean, uh, they don't have any interior photos. So, uh, Herbie, using your own tech, yeah. your own words against you, uh, we have no idea if this is a hot mess below or not. But for 1100 bucks, who can, you can assume it is. <laughs> it's, honestly, these boats are racing boats, so it's probably stripped out and gutted for racing. Yeah. But it's a thousand bucks. Like, go to Ikea, get some chairs. What? Sit on them. <laughs> Like cut them to fit the hall, screw them in the place. Like, hey, you know, it's a thousand bucks. <laughs> it says there's a head on board too. Uh, so it's got everything you need and a thousand bucks. I mean, uh, if you used it for two seasons and it disintegrated underneath you, at least you had some fun, right? I mean, <laughs> and you've dipped your toe into sailing. I think it's a cool pick. It is the wild card. She's 25 feet, 1100 bucks. What can go wrong? All right. So everybody, we're going to, uh, we're going to add up our scores, and today we're just going to come up with our uh, first, second, and third place winners and uh, see who uh, walked away with the Maryland crown today. So uh, stand by. We'll be right back. All right, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. We've done some higher math and some accounting work, and we called in a third party to verify the results, and we have um, a winner. Actually, we don't. We have a tie. But... Coming in third place, we're going to get to that in a second. Coming in third place with a grand total of uh, 65.5 points is the beautiful um, 1985 Sea Sprite 34. So she was number three. Uh, and the tie, 
uh, and this is where it gets confusing, is the Baba and the Krelok at 67.5 points each. So in order to break the tie, we're just going to do a show of hands of which one we would buy. So, um, Maddie, let's why don't we get start their, with you? Let's, let's get their picture up. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. I forgot. So I'm, I'm a very Krelok. visual. I'm a very visual person. <laughs> right. And also, how much is this Krelok? The, the Krelok was... 12.5. 12.5. Yeah. yeah. 12,500, the Baba is 20,000. So, we're gonna throw it to you, Maddie. Which would you buy? I, I mean, the Krelock. It's no question for me. Krelock. Okay. More enough. boat, less money. Beautiful boat. Yeah. So, Herbie, you're going with the Krelock too? All right, well, then it's decided. The Krelock wins. Uh, the... Oh, yeah, yeah gone which, for. which would you have gone? I, I think from aesthetics, from an aesthetic point only, I would go with the Baba. She's so pretty. And uh, I love the bowsprit. I love the woodwork. Um, but I can live with the Krelok. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to uh, rain on the parade here. I think she's a beautiful boat. And I think she's a great blue water cruiser. Uh, so second place, the Baba. And coming in first, hot, 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 the 1977 37-foot Krelok uh, located in Eastern Maryland for 12500 Nice work, Maddie. Hey, guys <laughs> that was super fun there it is the crown <laughs> i win i just want that to be I, it, it's important for it's the viewers important to for know her. that yeah. i win <laughs> I, you know what take the win you deserve it that was that's a great pick <laughs> and really appreciate you guys uh joining me today that was a lot of fun so much fun thank you for having us i loved this it was so fun seeing because herbie and i we didn't show each other our picks beforehand so we didn't know what each other had picked. Yeah. And then she pulls out like this gorgeous <laughs> boat for no money. I'm like, how? <laughs> like I was trying to find boats that were over 30 feet and there were, as you saw, almost 40 grand. And then bam, 37 foot for 12. So, I mean, <laughs> this is a fun game. This is- You go out of state, but this one is in Maryland. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there's that too. There's that too. This one deserved it. Uh, thank you so much for having us on and playing this game with us. And uh, who knows, the the buyer of these boats may be watching us today. That would be pretty cool. <laughs> and hopefully they'll take us all for a second. Yes, that that, a yes that, that, that would be great. We deserve it. <laughs> yeah, we, we helped them find the boat. You're welcome. <laughs> exactly. All right, guys, thank you so much. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everybody, and we'll see you next week. The damn thing we don't care. Catamaran goes anywhere. Both for sailing in our modest vessels. Ways we wrestle, making all the sense.